I'm going to do this little bit of tidy up. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna realize some potential. Uh, Wade educated me um, over the break um, about something that um, he was looking into last night and and the answer is is a matter of delight for me. And so I'd like to, to share the benefits of this information with you. And specifically, it has this issue to do with this issue of transportation modality, choosing a transportation modality. I had said that this map, if you click on it, excuse me, if you click on the map, it's set up for a certain road type. We're going to add different support for different modalities. And specifically, um, we will go and uh, have three modalities. Mm, um, uh, right, um, indeed. Yeah, no, we'll have uh, four modalities uh, shown, okay? Um, and uh, in order to do this, I'm going to introduce, so I'm doing this in part to introduce you to some very useful features in any budget that have not yet been featured. These are very common and very useful. The first of them is called an option list. Okay? It provides a categorical set of different, different uh, it's, a, it's a set of categorical uh, quantities. In this case, there'll be modalities, transportation modalities, car, bike, walking, and bus. So to, to capture this, you would I'm going to save this as version eight going forward. There we go. And I am going to right click uh, on the model and I will say new option list. Okay. And this is going to be called transportation modality. Okay. I think we'll do three just to avoid, yeah, you know, to avoid you know extraordinarily long uh, uh, commute times. Transportation modality, okay, and basically we can name a set of things. Commonly, we do this for something like sex, and we'll have male, female, and other, or something like that. Um, here we'll. We'll make it for transportation modality. We'll make it um, uh, uh, bike. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do walking. Sure. Um, I'll do bus and I'll do a uh, car. Okay. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these will be four options. I could have had sex, you know, male, female, other. And once I do this, then I'll have a way to describing type of, of like a parameter or of a variable being transportation modality. So I just set that up transportation modality. This is a set of different values that are possible. Trans if, it knows that if a Parameter holds a transportation modality. It's one of these four. Okay, that's step one. Step two. Okay, that's a bit of a, of a mouthful, I know. Uh, step two, uh, I'm going to add another construct you really want to know about. From the palette, I'm going to go add from agent. There's a thing called a custom distribution. Do you see that? Drag in a custom distribution to your model. And this will be called commuting mode distribution. So it's, it's basically going to record distribution of values set of possibilities, it's a probability mass function, for the different commuting modes, transportation modes, that are engaged in by the populace. Now, 
this could be a continuous dis a distribution over a continuous value, over a discrete value, or over options. What which one do you think will be? If I want to make it over saying what fraction of the population uses different transport different transportation modalities, what do you think it will be? Continuous, discrete, or options? Options. And if we say options, it lets us choose the option list. Do you see that? Okay, transportation modality. So this is going to let us specify choices here. Okay, and you'll notice for each of these, I could fill in a value. Now, this doesn't have to add to one. It will normalize it. It will make it will take the fraction. Of, but I, I want to divide it. So maybe I'll say biking will be point you know, point 0.2, um, walking will be point 0.2, uh, car will be uh, point 0.5, I don't know, point, point um, word only so, point 0.4, and I'm going to, to make car, uh, sorry, bus, point 0.4, oh, gosh, if, if only it were that, um, point, uh, point 0.2 and point 0.4. Um, uh, it's... This was this is an aspirational target at this point, um, uh, especially in winter. Uh, so uh, it, it will add it to one, but it doesn't strictly have to. It will take the fraction. So this is a distribution. Each time it will draw one of these with the with the probability given by this value over the sum of the values, which in this case is just this value, divided by one, yeah, this value. Okay, so this is a, a distribution for that, okay? Next, we're almost done. We're, we're, this, is, this is most of it. I'm, I'm introducing an option list. You should know about them. They're really common. They're often used for representing something like someone's sex or occupation or, or immigration status, or what have you. You have a set of categorical or nominal possibilities, right? Okay. Um, next, um, we are going to, for the population of people, guess how, oh, we're going to add for person, guess what we're going to add? A, each person is going to have a commuting mode. Have a commuting mode, okay? So we're going to drag in a parameter to person, and it's going to be called commuting commuting modality. I'll call it modality, meaning like transportation modality. And what sort of type do you think that will be? So I dragged in a parameter to person, and what sort of type do you think it will be? Transportation modality. Really nifty to be able to say this. You know, you can imagine doing it again, having their immigration status being specified in a parameter, or having their sex, or having their province where they live in a parameter, right? Anything where you have these nominal possibilities. You use an option list to encode them, and you can have it as a value that is stored, and then, in fact, a variable that could change over time. Okay. Transportation modality. Now, I'll say here by default, let's say car, by default, unfortunately, oh, I'll say walking, walking, okay? Walking uh, by default. Um, but really, where do we specify the values for, for persons? Where do we specify their values of, of, of these parameters? They're specified in the population. These folks are good, okay? Okay, um, in the population. So we want to go to Maine. And there we go. And so the commuting modality, here it says, why does it say walking there? Because we just said that was the what? Default value. But instead, to determine it for each person in the population, we're going to draw it for one from the distribution. Do you remember that? We created that distribution. So we're going to draw it from the commuting, computing, commuting role, commuting mode 
distribution. I'm sorry I called it mode. I, I should have called it modality, but don't go and try to fix it. Any logic has can have a fit when you do that. Okay, commuting mode distribution. Are we okay with that? So we're gonna draw it from a distribution. What, what mode they use to commute? And remember that was defined, oh yes, and that was defined, remember a 40% chance of being a car, 20% being a bike, 20% being working. Do you see that? So the commuting modality, this is the parameter, it's in person, and we're gonna draw the value for that parameter from this uh, distribution here. And that's what we're doing. We, we put open paren and uh, close paren, that just says, draw it from the distribution. That's how you draw from the distribution. You say, hey, give me a value. Give me a, a random commuting modality with the, the probability given by that distribution. Are we okay with this? Hey, just about done. Just about done with, with this thought. Okay, cool. You ready? You ready for the, the final little push? Okay, this is gonna take about five minutes for this little push. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, great, great. I love seeing people help each other. That's great. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Harriet, for, for doing this. This is awesome online. I see you're also the Zoom master still. That's great. Okay, so we're going to, to do, now we want to put in place something that for a given, so if a person has a certain transportation modality, that's their commuting modality, we'll find out for a given transportation modality, what is the speed with which that travels? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm going to put in place, um, a function. Its job in life is to take in a transportation modality, return the speed of it. So it's going to be called speed for commuting or for transportation modality. Speed for hey, transport transportation modality. That's the name of the function. And what it lacks in brevity, it makes up for in clarity. Okay. And the job of this function is not to perform an action, it's to return a value. And what sort of value does it return? Well, it's a speed. And a speed could be 0.5 or 9.2 or, you know, uh, 9.8. What? Well, um, so what sort of value is that that it returns? Is it a Transportation modality, is it a double? Is it a is it an int or bool? Return say the the double double. Okay. Double. Returns a double. It's like 3.4 or whatever. It's a it's a it can be a fractional quantity. Okay. Okay. So it takes one argument, which is called modality, and it's of type. And wait, this, yeah, okay. It's of type transportation modality. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? So this job, the function has a job in one. What's its job in one? Given a, a, a transportation modality, walk, it will tell us how fast people walk. Given car, it will tell us how fast on average cars go. Given bus, it will tell us how fast on average buses go. Given cycling, it will tell us how fast cyclists go. Are we okay with that? Hearing no objections, um, I'm going to put in place the function body. Now, there's a there's a nice there's several nice ways to do this, and but I'm I want to keep the Java knowledge basic. Oh, it's so tempting. 
it's so tempting to do one. But I want to teach the basics before before doing the more advanced one. Oh boy. Okay, I'm torn, but I'm gonna do the basic. I'm sorry. I feel I feel sad, but okay. If modality double equals, that means is it equal to walking? If so we will return 0 0.5. Else, if modality, I'll paste it in, equals car, return 9.0. Notice the semicolons have to await it blinked. Else, if modality this is brutal and there's a more beautiful way to do it far more beautiful bus i will say it'll go at about half the speed of a car because it's got to stop and and restart maybe maybe, maybe two-thirds the speed 6.0 maybe maybe two-thirds the speed is more realistic because it's not like it stops everywhere and otherwise um uh we will say that it's cycling and and we'll say that it returns uh, returns uh, maybe a third the speed of a car. Okay, uh, 3.0. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't need to put these uh, here. Yeah, I, I'm going to paste it into the chat. Here we go. So that's that's what it is. It first goes through each of these. And now, if this were my student... I give them a, a a bit of a talking to, and I'd say you really want to check the else clause. Is it the missing one? Uh, for as as a matter of offensive programming, you want to be extra careful and flag an error if it's not one of these four that I'm assuming. But for now, we're going to keep that. So the job of this function is in life. It's given a modality: walking, car, bus or, or uh, biking, and it, it figures out which one is given, and it just returns the value, returns the math from it. And there are more beautiful ways to do it, far more beautiful. But I will, we need to build the basics first. And you haven't even seen double equals, except maybe once before. Okay, so the job of that is to translate the modality into a value. Okay, next, next, um, we are going to go and for the population, we will use this. So the initial speed of the population, it's under dimensions and movement. Guess what it's going to be given by? Yeah, speed for transportation modality. And guess what modality? Whose modality? Self, good, commuting modality. Hi. Commuting modality, yeah. Do we need a semicolon? No, it's just computing a value. Commuting a number. It's like a formula in Excel. You don't need a value. Value be like, go oh, do this, buddy, make this happen, etc. Okay. 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 Great. Now there's one thing we haven't done. We didn't set up the router to be different, but I want to make sure this is 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 going to work properly. And I'm going to run this. Try running it, and we're going to go and check out for different people here. What are their transportation modalities? For the people in the population, here's one. It's it's a bike, that person's a biker, just like the instructor. 
Uh, this next person is also a biker. Wow, it makes three of us. Okay, this one is uh, has a car. This one has is a biker. Wow! Oh, look at that. We're we're crowded. Um, walking. Okay, now we'll go back to the whole population, and here's fifteen. Okay, the time the witching hour is upon us, and now people are going to go to their commutes. And you notice some people are taking longer. Why are some people taking longer? Because they're walking, whereas others were in a car, others were in a bus, and others yet were in a bike. And so they're sorting, um, and some are now leaving work, and they're going more slowly, et cetera. Okay. Okay, we're just about done with this. We just have a tiny bit more to do. And it's going to build on that thing. And then this will be a thing of elegance and beauty. A model that will retain its value for years and educate generations of future students. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to do something I have never done before. But, I, but inspired by Wade, I'm going to um, give it a try. So... We got a space markup. This remember what we went to for space markup before? GIS, yeah. And make sure you're in Maine. Make sure Maine is is showing. This is one of the most rookie mistakes is to not pay attention to what you're going to add it to. Make sure you're going to add it to Maine. Okay. I'm going to drag in route provider. Not one, but guess how many of them? One for each modality. That means how many modalities? Four. So this is going to be car route provider. There we are. And Wade, you're going to keep me on the straight and narrow here, I hope. Uh, this will be bike, uh, bike, bike, route, biking. To really, somebody to say bike route provider. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I'm going to drag one in for, um, uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to drag one in for walking route provider. Um, and instead of car, I'm going to call it vehicle route provider or, you know, motor vehicle, um, uh, motor vehicle, um, just because it will apply to car as well, to bus as well. They'll go in the same. This is not like a city with dedicated bus lanes, unfortunately. Okay. So the motor vehicle route provider, which will use the car road type. The bike. So this is important. The motor vehicle one, we use car for the road type. The bike route provider will use, guess what? Bike. <laughs> the walking route provider will use what? Foot. Foot. There we go. Okay. We're nearly there. Three to five more minutes. Okay. Next, we are going to provide the route provider. Given a modality, we'll have get back a route provider. What construct will we use that its job in life is given one thing, it'll give us back something. We, we built one just a few minutes earlier for given a modality, we got back a uh, speed. What do we use? Begins with F. Uh, yes. Function. Function is right. That's right. It's a function. So we're going to go. It's exactly right. Bang on. Rachel is hitting one thing after the next here. Um, so it's going to be called a function. And it's going to be called route provider for transportation modality.
it's the job of this function to undertake just an action returning nothing or does it return a value right it does return a value what is it and what sort of value does it return it it returns an other actually and what is that other it is a called a route provider actually route route provider transfer i think it's i think it's this one here let me let me go tell you what it is it's a route provider mumble uh wade um mumble mumble yeah yeah um uh i think uh we could i you know, I, can I show you how you'd figure this out if you didn't have a Wade? One way you could do it. Well, one way you could search for route provider in the any logic help. That'll be that'll be the less adventurous option. So I could go search here route provider. Here we go and and um, uh, ba -ba -bum, GIS route um, mumble mumble. Um, route okay this isn't looking all that great but let, let's try this route provider okay um okay i'm i'm searching with it quoted um and not oh my gosh i don't know why it's <laughs> i don't know what it's searching for route provider um this this is not looking that great in finding this so i think i'm going to use this other option um so i'm going to close this um uh one thing i could do is i could just say well i'll guess it's a uh, route provide i'll guess it's one of uh route provider um and and one of these things route provider but the real thing I could do that would, um, I see, I see, uh, rate it looks like it may be an I route provider. Um, yeah, an yeah. I write route provider. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Think, Wade, do you see what's happening, Wade? That cool destroying business. Yeah. What's going on? Didn't we solve this with, I thought they fixed it. Yeah, that's it. What's that? Remember, yeah. Leah had this problem. Yes, I do. We actually communicated with any. Logic. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close any logic. I'm gonna come back in because that, that was a funky, that was funky town. Um, sorry, I'm using technical term, folks. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, let's, 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 let's. Uh, I just sp split the joint, and and I'm gonna come back in here. And um, yeah, something went wrong there where it it put in code there and bad things happened and I got scared. So I left and I came back in. Okay. Um, I was going to show you a, a clear way to, to do it, but um, let's let's let it load back up here. And I wonder if it's going to give us this uh, error on on startup again. Okay. Okay. Well, take a while to, to start up, that's for sure. Um, okay, so um, let's get that model open again. Uh, hopefully none of you experienced that distressing uh, issue, but... Um, uh, I'm going to go back to that to that issue here, and basically we are setting up this function. And oh, oh, okay, speed. Oh, sorry, this was a double. I'm sorry, I started doing something crazy. I, I I changed speed. I meant to do this route provider. Okay, this should be I route provider. I'm pretty sure that 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 will be the correct one. There we go. Yeah. And the name will be modality. And 
and it is going to be so it needs one bit of information to do its job the modality what sort of thing is that it's a what is it an int a double a float a, a, a person a school or a what transportation modality great and here we go we could actually copy the basic code from here and we're just returning different sorts of things but we're going to handle these same values so I'm copying the code from speed for transportation modality, and I'm copying it here, okay? So if it's modality walking, what route provider will we return? If, if, if we're interested in walking, which route provider will we use? I'll zoom in on them in case you can't see them. There we go. Here we go. There we are. So which one will we return if we're walking the walking route provider this one right here the route provider that knows how to route me via walking paths including you know sidewalks and including walkways under circle drive and all that sort of good stuff if it's a car which one will i return motor vehicle route provider this return means give back that value as the value of this function. If it's a bus, which one will I return? Motor vehicle. And otherwise, it'll be a bike route provider. Well, bike route provider. Okay. Okay. Now, I told you I was going to show you a secret way to figure out what which one this was. I'll tell you, um, make sure this builds, make sure it's a happy camper, and then I'll, I'll show you how I could do it. This is not for the faint of heart, but occasionally it's needed. I, I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Occasionally you need to do this. Um, comparatively rare in my experience, but maybe it happens one out of every 20 sessions for me, but it, it sometimes happens. Um, if I wanna know what sort of thing is this, like what, what is the type of this? I can copy its name, and I'm going to show you something that may scare you. Okay? Watch this. If I go over here, and this is in main, so if I right-click on main, and I say open with, I can open it and see the Java behind it. Okay? This is actually the code behind it. You do not, you cannot modify this code. This is the code that any logic generates. But I could search it and I can say, find that for me. And I say, oh, it's an IGIS route provider. Look at that, Wade. It's an IGIS route provider. Great. Now I know what type it is. And you can close it. Occasionally you'll have to go in here. Sometimes it will come up. You'll get an error message and it will say on a certain line of main.java and you can go in here and see, oh, what line is it? You know, when I wore a young man's shoes for several summers, I worked as a assistant in a field school in Northern Kenya where we were digging up ancient hominid remains. That's in fact ancient human remains from uh, around 1.8 million years ago. And there were a lot of poisonous things around, a whole lot. That was in this field school. And a lot of the, most of the students were in their uh, early 20s. And I was told by the lead of the field school, he said, if you yell snake at a camp like this, he said about half the people run towards it and half the people run away from it. And so and when I show this, there are some people that probably will say, ah, now I get to see what's secretly behind it. And then there's a lot of people run away like it's a snake. So pick your poison. Um, so the, occasionally I have to look at this. It ain't pretty. I don't like it. But occasionally it comes up. And it is useful to have that as a recourse. You could see what's there. And sometimes to interpret some error messages is helpful. I change this to IGIS route provider. Okay, that's it. That's it. And oh, we have to do one final thing here for people, for the population. Now we have this ability to get the route provider for each person in the population. So route provider for transportation. Oh, I should put this in the chat message. There we are. It's a 
and this function. There we are. Boom. This is what I call intermediate level on any logic. Okay, in the in the population per person, I'd like you to put in now down down uh, in initial location. There's a thing called routing. Do you see that in initial location? See how it says by default, it's like use default. This little thing, when you see this equal sign, it's often an indication you can choose either to specify it statically, meaning it's not changing, it's not overridden, or I will specify it when I'm running it. And that's what I want. I want this one, okay? And I want to figure out for this person, what's my route provider? Guess what I need to do? Where will I get my routing provider? I will do what? I will call the function route provider for transportation modality. And what's the modality? It's the same one as we saw up here. Wanda said it with clarity. Self dot commuting modality. It's my commuting modality. That's it. That's it. My... So I'm going to say, hey, my commuting modality is biking. Give me my route provider. And this function we just created will say, oh, uh, you're on a bike? Okay, I'm going to return to you a bike route provider. Someone else here, maybe they have a commuting modality that's a car. It'll say, oh, okay, um, for that, um, I will call off. I'm going to specify car to this route provider for transportation. Look up car. I'm going to return you the motor vehicle one. There we go. So now we have in this population something that looks up their speed. If they're in a vehicle, if they're in a bus, it'll be slower than a car, but it also returns the route provider. And I think we're done. I think I think this is it. That's it. Okay. So baseline run. There we go. There we go. And Okay, um, so we have different people who will be in different modalities, and now they're going to use different route providers. So the people who could take footpaths will take them. They'll walk under the tunnel and circle drive near Evan Hardy and go under there in a way a car couldn't and a bus couldn't. Um, they can take the bike paths and the, the footpaths uh, by the university, etc., and move around the city um, with appropriate care. Oh, look at this. Some folks are going, oh, yeah, they're going along Regina, uh, I mean, uh, Spadina Drive. Some might even go along the Miwasan Trail or something. Um, that's pretty nifty. Okay. Um, and, of course, all of this is tied in under the surface with exposure to cold air temperatures, to varying air quality, which can lead to coughing or wheezing. And it's looking like this person has a chance of experiencing here a bout of coughing and wheezing um, unless they get out of this adverse environment. Time ticks on and here we go. Uh, and I'm afraid this person's going to have a bout. Oh, they're having a bout of coughing and wheezing. Way to bland. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it. This model has never been built before, and you've done it, and you inspired it. And I'm going to now post it in your honor. There we go. Okay. Great. Um, so here we go. Okay. GIS. IGIS route provider. Thank you, Harriet. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on this? I'm about to wrap up. I mean, that that's what I plan to provide for GIS. And is there any are there any questions? Any inquiries you want to bring forward? Comments, questions, concerns? Yes, to Zhang Wenjing. 
between for this jazz map uh, between different hospitals or schools. So could we see the distance? Yes. Yes. Uh, so great question. The question was for those online uh, from John Run Jing. Um, she was wondering uh, in the GIS map, is there a, a means of calculating distance between uh, points uh, within uh, GIS space or between like myself and the nearest hospital or myself in the clinic or, or, or what have you? Uh, absolutely. And uh, maybe the easiest way to see this is, uh, and pardon me, I'm just uh, futzing with this. Um, uh, if I got a person, if I were to go, um, if I were to go uh, here to in transit, I'm not going to change any of this code. But what I will show you is that you could inquire about that. Okay. Um, and uh, you could ask, for example, um, uh, uh, distance, uh, uh, distance by route to another agent, okay, um, or distance to here. Um, there's this uh, distance, you notice it says calculates the distance from this agent to another one in continuous 3D space or GIS space. And I can ask about the distance to latitude or longitude or to another agent or to a point um, in, in GIS space. So any of those, uh, you can inquire about um, the distance. And um, maybe it's worth saying, if anyone's interested, um, I had noted this morning uh, that other model, uh, which was available in our example models, um, uh, and I believe that I downloaded at the time GIS food and physical activity environment with scatter plots. This, this is a model which makes extensive use of that function. And specifically agents behavior here, their propensity to use a healthier food option like a grocery store compared to a convenience store nearby is is governed by in part by not just their predilection for healthy meals but also the distance to each if they want to make a milk and bread run um uh they may go to a convenience store um uh and in ways that you know they might if there were convenience uh, a grocery store nearby they would prefer that so there's this function called probability of shopping wisely. And by the way, in any logic, if you put your mouse over something and you hold down your control key or in Mac, it's a command key, Wade. Yeah. You can often get it to underline things and you can click on it and see. And you notice, John Wen Jing, that here it's asking about the distance from myself to the nearest convenience store or the nearest supermarket where these things are actually drawn from GIS databases, just like our schools were. And based on that and based on my, my preferences for healthy foods, I'll decide to get a one versus the other. Okay. Um, and that will lead to uh, shape my decision-making and thereby shape my weight, my food, my food intake shape the healthiness of my food intake, shape um, my caloric imbalance, shape my um, my uh, health trajectory. Also considered is my distance to the nearest park, okay? Um, so distance from home to the nearest park is something that is also computed uh, and used in the model. So yeah, this is a very common feature. And you can find that distance um uh, along a route if you want to like you know if, if i if i have to walk there i'll find it along the routing provider what's what's the distance if i'm walking or what's the difference if i'm driving versus another option as i understand it, so, as i recall is as the crow flies meaning straight line distance yeah so you can do either one big difference if you have a city divided by a river right where maybe i have to go certain 
you know, inconvenient route just to get across the river, whereas as the crow flies, it looks close, but it's actually a much longer, longer deal. All right. Yeah. Great question. Um, uh, I, I will just note that in these regards, this model, if anyone's interested in going a bit deeper in GIS, if you run this model, this model actually has a dynamic set of these um, uh, these uh, GIS-based quantities, or or I should say these geographic resources. So um, here we have these people circulating from their homes to convenience stores and grocery stores. And if you, uh, you can watch from this, the induced patterns of, you know, based on these are scatter plots, right? Um, that relate distance to convenience stores to their weight or grocery store distance to their weight, uh, preference for meals to their weight, park distance to their weight. These are emergent patterns coming out of this. And I'm, I'm running this with a very small population uh, just because I didn't think to, to do it with a larger one right here. But the point is, if I double click on this, I can put new conven like new supermarkets in food deserts and see what the consequence is over time for people's weights or for these associations, um, for people's shopping patterns, et cetera. That can come dynamically, whereas with our model that we just built, for all the many virtues that recommends it, it has you know a fixed collection of schools, for example. This, you can actually add them, and it wouldn't be hard to add parks in as well, okay? so. So if anyone's interested in looking a little bit more and it, how things affect human behavior, you might want to check uh, check this one out and see how people balance distance with preferences, et cetera. Any other questions? Questions? Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Great. Anyone online? Um, one final thing I'll say, there are certain areas where if you're going to use agent-based modeling, um, where the, the technical demands are steeper, and there's some where they're less steep. GIS is one of these areas that I'd say it's, um, you will want to be conscious of performance trade-offs. You want to be conscious of like where data lives. On a, on a server outside your organization, on a server inside your organization, on your machine. You wanna be savvy often about where that data lives so it's faster. And um, there can be some programming involved if you want to make you know heavy use of, of these things. We've just seen me create some functions. Um, it is one of these areas where you know I'd say, um, it's a little bit more demand, um, you know, in on the the technical side. You've seen it. Hopefully, that it's not prohibitive, but it's it. You know, you you do have to do a bit of extra work if you want the flexibility that comes with uh, GIS, etc. So just bear in mind um, that it is one of these areas you need a bit more savviness, and it doesn't help to have. A, it doesn't hurt to have a friend to have as a computer scientist. Um, sometimes who, you know, are a programmer who, who knows their way around. Um, now, maybe for some that sounds prohibitive, and I'll, I'll just say this. I mean, you know, for an epidemiologist, a, a traditional epidemiologist, um, or, or someone trained in public health with an MPH, just like it's useful to have colleagues and trusted colleagues who you could work with. Uh, maybe someone could record the blink there or let Wade know about it uh, in the spreadsheet. Um, just like it's useful for an epidemiologist or someone with an MPH, someone who's an operating public health officer to know people who are biostatisticians for certain needs or even statisticians. So it is these days for this sort of modeling, even if you're doing you know, some of the modeling your, yourself, even if you're feeling good enough, you, you want to have access to someone who, who has deeper background in it. Yeah. 
you know, to ask questions, right? Uh, way to judge blame. Okay. Um, so, so it's it's good to have those networks, and the networks that you want are are a little bit uh, deeper on the um, on the computer science side. Uh, well, quite a bit deeper for for agent based modeling, um, and they would be for something like system dynamics. Okay, so that's all I've time or comments for for GIS. Okay, thank you everyone uh, for that. Okay, so. Um,